Why are people always drawn to the weird, creepy, broken, and sometimes just bizarre things in life? When I tell people what I do for a living, the responses fall into that category. Some are amazed, others are intrigued, most are creeped out, but I see it as so much more. I see a used, cracked, broken, and beat up piece of art that needs restored. I carve and restore professional ventriloquist dummies, and in some ways, it reminds me of my own story. So after high school, I started tinkering with the dummy building and kind of honed it and perfected it as the years went on. And by the time I was 30, I established a reputation um, and was able to go full time into doing figure making. I always love seeing these for the first time because just like people, each one has its own unique story. Many of these are 100 years old and have spent a lifetime on the road performing for people all around the world. Just like people, the long lives of these puppets often leave dings and scratches and marks. And if they're around long enough, just like people, they often find themselves in need of restoration. My niche was the vintage. I stayed busy restoring uh, old dummies for collectors in museums and performers all around the world. And by 30, I had basically achieved my dream life. I had a beautiful, wonderful family. I had my dream career. And, but I was miserable because there came a time when my, my restoration side of my business just blew up and I was about three years backlogged. And the stress of it all, trying to keep up and trying to do everything just consumed me. I couldn't get enough time in the shop uh, to stay caught up, so my customers were getting unhappy. Uh, but spending all my time out there meant that I was neglecting my wife and my kids. And so there was a strain on those relationships. just came to the point where I was consumed with it and overwhelmed. I had depression, anxiety, panic attacks, all these horrible things. And I turned to the bottle to escape and to try to help me cope. It's crazy how quickly the disease of addiction can make your life spiral out of control. What started as a couple drinks before bed quickly turned into I was hiding liquor bottles in my workshop beginning to drink in the morning and then lying to the people I cared about to try to keep it hidden and I still remember the day that I hit rock bottom it was the day I failed to pick my kids up from daycare because I began drinking early that day passed out by lunch and then failed to wake up to my alarm to go pick up the kids. When I didn't show to daycare, they called my wife at work and she knew it was drinking related, so she called my mom to come check on me while she went to pick up the kids from daycare. When my mom arrived, I was passed out with blue lips and she thought I was dead. And when I did come to, I just felt like the biggest failure my, my addiction caused me to neglect the two most important things in my life, my children. And I just felt like I let everyone down. I never felt more shame and guilt.
At this point, my wife had also reached the end of her rope because of all the lying to try to cover up my drinking. I had lost all trust with her, and we, she had been very patient up to this point, but she was about done. Um, I wasn't the man she married anymore. So I was outside, out driving one day by myself, and I cried out to God in desperation. I said, Jesus, I, I know I have to quit drinking, or this is either going to kill me or take everything I care about but I don't know how to stop because I tried multiple times and failed. I said, please help me. And as soon as I was done, I look over on the side of the road and there's a bald eagle staring at me as I drive by. And when I saw that bald eagle, I just started bawling because I knew that was an answer to my prayer. And when I saw that eagle, I could feel God telling me, I'm with you, I love you, and I am your freedom. So shortly after that, I checked myself into rehab. And while I was there, I had started pursuing God for the first time in a lot of years, I dusted off my Bible and spent a lot of time reading and praying. And while I was there, I said, God, I don't know who I am anymore, and I don't know who you are. Will you please show me? And ever since then, he has taken me on this beautiful journey of discovering who I am, who he is, and what his plans are for me. I haven't touched alcohol in over two years, and, and he came in and just started restoring everything and making things new. My marriage is better than it's ever been. My re relationship with my kids is awesome. I no longer have shame and guilt for being a horrible dad. And my work is even fun again because I'm caught up and there's a new season starting with that as well. So two years ago, I was a broken man, enslaved to addiction, desperately needing freedom and restoration and, but as soon as I called on Jesus he came in and he started fixing every aspect of my life and making things new and now while I still restore professional ventriloquist dummies for a living my real calling and purpose in life has become to partner with God to seek out broken people that uh, are at their rock bottom and they're hurting and they need they need freedom and restoration and a savior so I can extend a hand and you know, give him a hug and point him to Jesus because he is the answer to everything. Any problem we face in life, Jesus is the answer. And all I have to do is point him to him because he is the giver of life. He is the giver of identity and joy and peace. And he is the master restorer.